Hey, Keith, it's Patrick again. Uh, got your vids up here. I'm going to go over some uh, couple of things here. Uh, I appreciate you talking to me on the phone. We did clear up some things, and uh, we. Uh, I'm hoping I'm making a little bit of sense to you on the phone. Again, it's always tough to verbalize what you're trying to think and show over the phone or even over these video lessons, but uh, at least with the video lessons, we have some uh, visuals to look at. Uh, again, the... Uh, Vid on the left is uh, your most recent one you sent me, which is uh, <clears throat> I think I had you work on the uh, the uh, early wrist set drill to help get the club on plane. And from what I've seen so far, it it's uh, looks real good. Uh, again, let me uh, put this thing back down to where I want it, right about there. All right, now the picture on the right. Uh, Keith is, I think, your very first video you had with me. A uh, couple things. Uh, when that shaft is parallel to the ground, which both shafts are right now in both pictures, the shaft itself should also be parallel to the uh, target line. And uh, our target line is somewhere in this area. Well, that's the wrong one. Let me, uh, let me get rid of that for a second. Your target line is... Uh, basically somewhere down this area toe line hip line knee line the whole nine yards but look where your uh look where the shaft is I mean it is pointing way I mean it's it's way to the right of your target and that that's important because that tells me emphatically your shaft is on off plane and at some point in time during the forward swing uh, you're gonna have to make compensation whereas on the uh your new picture with the early wrist set in the uh, concavity of the, the lens of these cameras does skew things a touch but <clears throat> I can tell you right now the shaft here is a lot more on plane and again when you have that position there it's easier to keep the club on plane now there's one thing I want you to look at though at the top and this is something we're going to address as well is uh, see the hands way too far wrapped around for my liking again I like to see the hands more over here uh, which would in turn get the plane a little bit more upright and uh, it'll get you from swinging and turning in a barrel and start shifting the ball as well but I'm going to get into that in a second but uh, I, I do like the early reset drill and the uh, progress you've made with it like I said it's uh, I mean that's damn near perfect if not perfect depending on where you stop us at and where the uh, parallel to the ground position is reached it's somewhere in there and that's really good a heck of a lot different than what you sent me originally <clears throat> uh, let's uh, look at this at the top now for a second Keith uh, again you're very much around the torso swinger or as I, I like to call it flat uh, told me on the phone today which did not realize you're, you're short in stature flat swingers <clears throat> won't maximize your club head potential uh, because they basically uh, uh, restrict their their arc and their length of arc you know uh, I've got some uh, shorter students that I uh, teach and they hit the ball long ways for a couple reasons one they have a lot of lag on the downswing but at the top of the swing their hands are in a much higher position you know when these hands are in a higher position over here or even up here your your arc length is increased and therefore you got a bigger runway and more time to create club bed speed that's that's just one of the benefits the other benefit and most importantly in, in my opinion is this when this club shaft is more upright or more on plane in my opinion that has one very positive thing happening that means the golf club head travels a downward arc down the target line much uh, much easier you know ideally I mean this is not physically possible but let's say our backswing arc wasn't here uh, in fact let's say it wasn't there let's say it was straight up and down I mean now the golf club head never leaves the target line that'd be ideal but obviously physically we can't swing that way uh, we're not we're not made that way but any any time I get into an argument of upright versus flat I'm gonna take upright nine 
eight days a week and twice on Sunday for the mere fact that the club head itself has the ability to travel the target line more often during impact. And that's important because if we can get that club head, like I said, traveling up and down the target line instead of from in here, we've increased our chances of hitting a straight golf shot, assuming the club face is square and our, our uh, hands on the club are in a good position. So I, uh, I absolutely like the new... Uh, new pre-shot uh, routine or whatever you've been doing with it this early wrist set drill get used to it uh, I want you to also get used to this I want to see this club in in my opinion and how I teach my students in a more upright position at the top alright and uh, these hands ideally I'd like to see over here and uh, I like him to see over there for, uh, again, a couple of reasons. One, the plane's going to be uh, a little more upright, therefore the hands won't be stuck behind the body as much, but also as important as that, in my opinion, is, uh, let me get your other view up here for a second. We're going to touch on this in a second. Uh, it's it's going to help encourage weight shift, uh, well, which is, I shouldn't say that, it's, that's incorrectly stated. It's going to help encourage the club to stay on plane while you're shifting your weight I guess is a better way to say it uh, what I see with your golf swing and again this is a, uh, a product in my opinion of your Sean Foley move or stack and tilt you know like I said on the phone Sean Foley is a is 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 a disciple of the stack and tilt move uh, so you're gonna see a lot of stack and tilt in Sean Foley's uh, golf students uh, when I get you to the top hardly any lateral shift to the right and when I teach my students, this is imperative. We have to get moving. Our center of gravity has got to move this way on the back swing and obviously back this way on the forward swing, which yours does. Uh, yours, yours comes through the ball really nice, but we've got to get more lateral move on the back swing. If we can get more lateral move on that back swing, like I said before, the golf club head itself travels up and down the target line more often and less from this angle. I'm exaggerating that, but you kind of get the hope you get the idea. Now, let's go back to our, our main view here. Uh, let me get you at this beginning here, uh, Keith. Uh, here's the position I'm talking about. I call it the upper body box, if you will. At the top of the swing, our center of gravity which I'm, I'm guessing is going to be somewhere where our heart location is. We need to get this upper body moving this way ever so slightly. Now, obviously, you only have like a five, six, seven iron in your hand, so there won't be a lot of lateral move, but there's going to be some. The upper body moves that way. Your knee kind of buckles in towards that way and not out towards the camera. When I see this left knee protruding towards <coughs> the camera, that tells me emphatically... The only thing going on here is the hip turning this way and the upper body just turning this way instead of upper body moving this way off the ball a touch. And again, the way I teach people, this, this lateral move is important. It, it has a lot of things going for it. <coughs> Excuse me now, let me uh, see if I can find this without too much. Uh, here we go. Why upper body motion? Well, I'm going to tell you, for, for number one, when our upper body moves laterally, just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit, off the ball on the back swing and to the ball and to the target on the forward swing, again, that club head travels up and down the target line that much more often, maybe for half an inch more or an inch more. But it makes a great, great big difference in terms of ball flight and direction. Now, in your case, let's get you over here again. When there's absence of lateral move on the backswing, which you have basically none, in my opinion. I mean, our uh, our head starts here, and basically we're st stuck right there on the ball. Let's get you to the top. Yeah, there really isn't much. There's a uh, <clears throat> just a big turn. It's like your whole body was sitting in a barrel, and all it's doing is turning around its axis. Again, that's foley, that's stack and tilt, that's what have you. But here's here's one of the results of all this, in my opinion. I want you to see something here, and we touched on this on the phone. In fact, uh, 
you even saw it on the phone or on one of your previous vids and uh, I also did see it but I'm trying to I'm trying to walk you through progression instead of jump and ship on a lot of stuff let me let me put something up here I'm gonna put your shoulder angle at address yeah dang it that's the wrong one bear with me here all right now I don't know that's probably 13 14 degrees ish now let's look at uh, Mr. Luke Donald here, who also has a very good golf swing, and he, he, you know, he's like you, he's right around 14, 13, 14, it depends on how you look at it. Now, let's get you at impact. I want to show you something here, uh, Keith. Uh, it's different. Let's, uh, let's move this out of the way for a second. Again, that was 13, 14 degrees. Uh, about 27, in my opinion. That's about right. That's a big that's a big spine tilt and that is less likely to happen when you're shifting your weight properly number one now let's look at Luke uh, Donald here on the on the right I'm gonna do something here I'm not even gonna change this angle right here with the shoulders this this line I mean that's damn near identical his shoulder angle at address and his shoulder angle at impact is very very similar I mean you could argue it's the same but who knows maybe it's a degree or two off but point being he's very level all right. When he gets to the top of his swing, his right shoulder doesn't drop this way, and his left shoulder doesn't go up this way. You know, he uh, he is very, as I call it, level. See that? Now, uh, I'm going to exaggerate this to try to show you what I'm talking about. Again, it's tough to verbalize, even with video, but. When I see these people that have a very downward move of the right shoulder, that also is complemented with an upward move of the left shoulder, and that's kind of what you're doing, among other things. But that's kind of what you're doing. Luke doesn't do that. He rotates his shoulders on a very, in my opinion, very good plane. They just rotate very level instead of right shoulder down, left shoulder up. He's got a very, as I call it, level shoulder rotation through impact. And that's, that's I, I can't tell you how important that is when it comes to solid strikes and compression and straight golf shots. And again, he's one of the best iron players we have out there, even to this day when he's farting with his golf swing and, in my opinion, thinking about stuff he shouldn't be thinking about. But the image I want to burn in your mind is this right here. And... Uh, right there and in impact very very similar okay one reason why he's on tour and making a lot of money uh now let's get you over here for a second Keith uh, this yellow line uh, is your uh, impact shoulder level and bang there you are again it's different too, too different. You know, you, you told me on the phone that you don't take divots when you hit good shots. You're a sweeper. Well, it, I, won't even, I won't even go that far. You're, a, as I call it, a scooper. And uh, we, we got to change that. Uh, the progression you've made so far is good. Uh, the main thing we had you work on in the first couple lessons is on that forward swing. Let me clear these lines out of here. On that forward swing, I had you, uh, especially from the top, to keep that body rotating. If that body continues to rotate, which it's getting better at, is it completely perfect yet? No, but it's getting much better. When that happens, these shoulders will have less encouragement to act the way they do. Let's get you to the top again. All right. Under, right there, left shoulder goes up, right shoulder goes down we got to eliminate that and uh, rotating through the ball completely with your torso is going to help encourage it is it going to fix it no but it's going to help encourage it that's what we're trying to do we're trying to encourage stuff now let me get this other drill up here again and uh, I think you've already, you've already been working on it to a certain extent the cover the ball drill uh, when, when we do this drill here I'm, I'm going to touch on a couple things this is a drill I want you to do all the time, quite frankly. This is something you got to get really, really comfortable at doing. 
this is something you got to really bleed out this bad shoulder position you have on the left, the picture on the left. Let me put myself at the top here. This is yours truly, uh, probably about seven, eight years ago. Right there. Now, at this point in time, these shoulders are behaving this way instead of right shoulder drop and left shoulder coming up. And it does that for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm physically trying to make my shoulders perform that motion, number one. But number two, my upper body is traveling this way through impact, and that helps encourage all this. You know, if my upper body, I'm not sure how much baseball you have in your background, Keith, but baseball is a good picture. You know, if your upper body, to start that forward swing, stays, uh, stays back here to start that forward swing and the lower body fires, this right shoulder will inevitably drop this way and your left shoulder will go up this way. And uh, that all happens because the upper body is not moving this way. Uh, I hope that's, I hope that's, exp you can understand what I'm trying to get across here. Let me, uh, let me put this up on the full screen for a second. You know, when, uh, <clears throat> when I tell my students to get to the top of the swing, I'm basically telling them to move their upper body this way. The head's going to move that way as well. Not, not so much that you think it's way too much, but I'm, I'm just telling you it does move that way a little bit. More importantly... It can't do that and leave the head behind. The head's going to move this way ever so slightly too, and that's what this drill really does emphasize. Let me see if I can get it moving in slow motion. Here we go. That allows the shoulders to be level at impact. Let me, uh... All right, now let me put this line up here for a second, buddy. Uh, now, again, this, uh... This exercise is so useful and so efficient in what it teaches your muscle memory it it's hugely helpful when it comes to getting these shoulders to move properly see that I mean my shoulder position at address my shoulder position at impact is very similar I never used to be that way you know when I was younger I, I used to hang back on my right side and that right shoulder would drop down my left shoulder would go straight up in the air and I'd use my forearms and hands to try to hit the ball straight and you know, I got really good hand-eye coordination. I was a really good player when I was younger, and it was I was doing it, but it's not the best way of doing it. Uh, now, let's get you up here for a second. Get you to the top. Starting down, 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 down. Then there you go. Stop right there. Now I'm going to stop you. It's like you hit a wall. You hit an imaginary wall right here with the upper body. The upper body stopped progressing this way and when it stops progressing basically this left shoulder goes up right shoulder goes down instead of moving laterally that's what happens left shoulder goes up right shoulder goes down and then of course all the other bad stuff goes along with this the uh, I call it scooping it, you call it hitting it, sweeping it, but there's a huge difference in those two, and uh, I don't think you quite realize the difference. Uh, I, I think you do, but conceptually, it's it's different what you think. This club head, I'm going to try to draw this arc here. If This is a golf ball right here. The golf club head's coming down, and you're catching it, I call ground zero, then it comes back up. Ideally, you want to catch that golf ball a couple, two, three degrees on the downswing, club will bottom out in front of the golf ball somewhere and then it comes up and you can't do that when when you're scooping or sweeping as you, as you call it and uh, we've got to get that changed the progression you've made since the first lesson which I really like is uh, things are all going to help encourage this positive change is number one the forward swing your torso rotation keep turning through the ball 
that is so important and I'm, I'm seeing it now this, I think this is a second or third set of videos you sent me and I'm starting to see that happen every time which leads me to believe it's becoming somewhat normal for you which is good number two these shoulders cannot and I can't stress this enough these shoulders cannot on that forward swing left shoulder up right shoulder down that cannot happen we have to get this upper body yep, wrong number here upper body head whole nine yards all moving this way and this way just like in my drill I showed you earlier see if I can pick it up here there we go get myself to the top all right now let's get uh, now these drills I have my students do are extreme and there's a reason for it anytime you're trying to change muscle memory you have to go to the extreme you have to go to the polar opposite end and try to change it because muscle memory is just that it's ingrained in your DNA to a certain extent it's tough to change but it's not impossible to change you can change it with specific drill work and this drill the, the ball position drill or the over-the-top drill whatever you want to call it is going to be hugely important for you to get these shoulders to act normal when I'm doing this drill and let me talk about this drill for a minute or two because this is important I I wish I had the opportunity to have you in person because this drill here is something that uh, I would spend probably a whole after half an hour on it with you you gotta realize something when, when when I do this drill and it's done properly it feels so much like I'm coming way over the top and that's what you gotta feel instead of coming from underneath you gotta feel like you're coming over the top now will you be coming over the top no not really you'll be coming right down the same plane and it's important that we do this it's important that we get these shoulders to move in the right direction it's important we get this upper body To move this way it's important we get the head to move that way it's important that we get the shoulder to move this way and not that way and if the upper body moves this way on that forward swing it is so much easier for the shoulders to behave parallel to the ground instead of as I call it uh, underneath or dropping and then let me show you what I mean by underneath again verbalizing what I'm trying to think and show or it's not real easy even with videos in front of you but let me get you this top right here now when I'm talking about underneath here's a pretty good idea hopefully I can get a little better idea of it with you the start of the downswing the right shoulder drops this way the left shoulder is going to make an attempt to go around but it's eventually going to come up in the air and that's kind of what you told me you were doing you think you were doing you were I mean I, I knew that from right from day one but we gotta we gotta get to the point Z in the proper procedure in the proper amount of time and uh, it's time to start thinking this way uh, on the back swing I want you to think I want you to sleep I want you to drink one thing all right this upper body has got to come this way obviously with a seven eight nine iron wedge it won't come that way that much but it will come that way with a with a driver in your hands it's gonna come this way a lot I mean that's a fact I'm gonna show you something here you know I have this argument with people that don't believe me there's weight shift in a golf swing and uh, well let's see something here models Let me see if I can find one uh, All right, now Brant, uh, Brant's a good one here. I'm going to show you something. There you go. I'm going to put a line right down where his head is, and in my opinion, right there's a center of gravity, I think. Well, maybe, I mean, to be honest with you, it's center of gravity. It's probably somewhere in there. Well, we just lost it anyways, but you understand what I'm getting at. Here's Brant Snedeker, motion off the ball probably four inches five inches of the driver all right now Brand also has one of the best on plane swings I've seen in a long time his shoulders are absolutely really good in terms of impact position now there's another one in here we're getting just gotta find it bear with me 
problem I have is I have way too many videos. Here we go. Here he is, Mr. Ernie Ells. Now I'm going to show you what lateral move is. And uh, that's Ernie's center of gravity. See, he, he has what I call a preset weight shift. And your Sean Foley guys have it as well. His center of gravity is already lined up probably four inches behind the ball. But let's get him to the top of the swing. Now look how much more over he's moved. I mean, he is loaded way up to the right, as I call it. That's a driver swing now, mind you. I mean, there's a lot of motion in that driver swing. That's where he's at, top of his swing. There's a lot of motion there. All right, now, show you somebody else up here that... Uh, let me find him, dang it. He's tough to find. All right, I think I got him. There we go. All right, we'll use these same lines. Probably right there. Center of gravity, let's get Roy to the top. Again, he's loaded up. He's loaded up to the right. There's motion, Keith, off the ball. These are the best players in the world, and there's motion. Uh, let me show you what Sean Foley does. He, he's mentioned him in your uh, in our phone conversation, but I'm going to show you Sean Foley. Now, he's... Uh, Here's one of his A students, if you will. Although he hasn't been playing too well the last year. I'm not sure what's going on. This is a typical Sean Foley golf swing. Justin Rose is a lot like this. Let's get our center gravity down here somewhere. I think that's fair to say. Uh, dang it. There's something a little quirk in my software here. That thing keeps bugging out on me. It bugs me. All right. Now I'm going to try to figure this out. I think that's fair to say right there. I think it is. That's a center of gravity. God dang it, it did it again. I apologize. Try this one last time. Let's get him to the top. All right. You know, that by, by anybody's uh, visual perspective looks like a reverse weight shift, but it is and it's not. I mean... Uh, his, his center of gravity is behind the golf ball at the top of the swing. The difference is he starts it there at a dress and really doesn't move it. He just turns around that axis, but it is behind the ball. And uh, that's all we're looking for, really, in a golf swing is a load up behind the ball and unload. Uh, let's get him through impact here. Well, this is a very slow motion. We'll speed this up a touch. Bang and bang. But my, my point being, even if the Sean Foley swings that don't look like weight shift, there's weight shift there. They just preset it at a dress. And, uh, but long story short, what I want you to get out of this uh, little video update, if you will. Let me get you back up here again, Keith. Is uh, we're going to need to shift the weight off the ball. And... Uh, don't think I have that particular drill on my V1 stuff, but I will uh, put the link in the email. There is a uh, a video uh, instruction tip on my YouTube channel and even on my website on uh, how to shift the weight back and forth, how to make the back swing and forward swing wide, and that's something I want you to work on for sure. I think you even told me once you touched upon it or, or mentioned about it, but we have to get this upper body moving this way on the backswing and obviously this way on the forward swing which you do very well. Uh, that in itself is going to help encourage the shoulders to be more level. Number two, we got to get this uh, this drill here. This is going to be your uh, eat, sleep and drink drill. The ball position. You got to feel like you're coming over the top. You got to feel like that right shoulder stays high through impact. Uh, and that's what we're going to really concentrate on. And uh, let's get you back over here for a second now. Just bear with me. I want to see you down the line view again. Top of the swing here. We have to get these hands more on plane. When I teach my students, I want to see these hands out away from the body. I, I guess that's a bad, bad wording. I want to see the hands more in the middle of your body from this view step back behind your torso 
because this encourages greatly inside. It doesn't encourage up and down. When we get the hands in a higher position, or I should say more of a middle position from this perspective, the swing plane itself is uh, naturally more upright and it's going to get that club travel up and down the target line. So again, at the end of this video, uh, two things. That over-the-top drill or ball position drill, if you like to call it that, I want you to work on heavily. And uh, I'm going to send you another link to this uh, weight shift drill that I have on my YouTube channel and I believe it's on my instruction site. we got to get the weight going up and down the target line. we got to get these shoulders behaving more level. And if that happens... Eventually, this position here at impact is going to go away. Uh, the scooping, or whatever you want to call it, I call it scooping. I think you were calling it sweeping, but we got to get these shoulders. This right shoulder has got to be higher at impact. All right, it's got to be up here. Left shoulder has got to be over here. We got to get these shoulders looking much more parallel. Instead of having this. Yeah, let's use a different line. I want to show you something here. There's your 26 degree tilt. Way too much, way too much angle at uh, at impact for sure. So Keith, that's what I want you to work on, and uh, I like the changes you made so far. That uh, really wrist set drill is going to help encourage keeping that club on plane. And now it's now it's on to the next step in in the way I progress my students. Now we're talking about weight shift and getting the club traveling up and down the target line along with the upper body. And again, if you have any questions about this or if something doesn't make sense the way I verbalize it, just give me a call. Thanks.